chapter eight uh, key shot rendering works through so here again it's not technical introduction about key shot but i just want to go quickly through the different materials that i used and uh, you can uh, go yourself uh, into the file and uh, have a look at the different materials so what i did is i Uh, maybe I'll start by the environment. So this is the, um, the standard uh, startup environment. And uh, it was really fine for me because it provides uh, direction light with a diffuse, um, a diffuse, uh, diffuse lighting kind of soft, uh, soft shadows. And um, also what I like about this environment is for illustration is that it, provi it provides uh, quite a stylized uh, reflections. And uh, most of the time, what uh, cell, what uh, makes a CG reflection looks way too more CG. Uh, I would say CG renders too much CG for illustration is the nature of the reflections when they are too, too sharp and uh, you can see too much of the environment into it. Uh, you know, an illustrator would never go in that uh, level of details. So this this is something I, I usually do is to use stylized, uh, uh, a simply a simpler, minimalistic environment for reflections. Mm, as you can see, the the amount of uh, environment that is actually Participating to the lighting is not uh, gigantic, but it does something. And um, I wanted to have more of a diffuse environment. This is why I lower the, contra the contrast to 0.5. And uh, what it does is it, that it, it lowers the, the ratio between the dark areas and the light areas, providing a more diffuse environment and I, I, I lowered it quite a lot and uh, my main source of light is uh, this this, uh, this piece of geometry that I've added and um, what you can do in a, in a key shot is to assign one of those uh, wonderful materials which uh, act as a, as a light source and there <coughs> there are this uh, e i e s folder when you are going to find to find a lot of uh, really really uh, useful um, uh, lights because in fights they, they are lights they, they are they are under the the uh, they are classified as materials but uh, apart from the area light and the emissive light uh, most of the, and the port light most of the IES lights materials actually are spotlights, true to life spotlights. They are acting pretty much like a real light. So they are classified into ambient lighting, accent lighting, ambient lighting, general lighting, and most of them, and there are the general spotlights. They are classified by their degree of their angle of of cone, their cone angle, 45, 60, 85. So you can play with them. In, in that case, I just use a, a spotlight at, at a 60, 60 degree, just to have a, that, uh, that, nice, um, that nice lighting. Okay, this camera is locked. I oh, know, it's, it's not locked. Okay. So here, oh, it works. You can see. And I, I really, I really wanted to have this um, background more into the shadow, and uh, this spotlight really enabled me to choose uh, the um, the area of incidence. So it's it's really a great light. 
and uh, yet the environment will still be used by uh, by Keyshot to to define the reflection. Uh, this is why it's it's very important to have to have an environment to have um, quite realistic uh, reflections, even though they are stylized because it's it's very minimalist. So as you can see, I I uh, assigned my different uh, textures files that I created. Um, here in um, the scene area, I also have a second sphere, which I actually used uh, to create my um, my all lamp. We can see in here. Mm. Um, I'm going to maybe not go through all of those materials because because most of them are pretty straightforward. They are just uh, either some materials that I picked in the library or materials that uh, that I that are, are just a, a variation of the of the basic material and I just change the um, the nature so for example this armor border if I'm going into I think I can use that um, select parts with materials Hmm. Funny behavior. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter, but uh, these are those parts here. No, no, this one. No. <laughs> I'm going to find it. Are oh, more borders, but okay. No, maybe I didn't use this after all. Well, if it's in there, it means that it's been used. But uh, anyway, um, this is an armor shell material. So for some materials, I used uh, the material graph editor. So you can click on it, and uh, it's going to give you a, a nodal view of the materials. So for most materials, the nodal view is composed of the, the main materials here and a different texture map as input. But um, what I did, for example, for this one, which is um, fabric left leg materials, I'm going to open the material graph editor, is I, that I used a new feature of uh, Keyshot uh, 6, which come along with the, um, with the node editor, which is the, the ability to apply um, another materials on, on what was previously labels. And uh, in the previous, pre previous version of uh, Keyshot, you could uh, add a label uh, with a texture on top of your, of your, um, of your renders which would uh, enable you to put like uh, well label on a bottle or on, on uh, whatever you want. But it, for me, in my, in my case, it wasn't super useful. So I never really used it. But uh, since Keyshot 6, now you can just uh, create another materials. And you, you can chain a lot of materials like that. You just create a, a diffuse materials. And uh, when you try to assign it here, it's going to create another label. And uh, you'll be able, using the transparency, to decide uh, where you want to, to apply this label. So, thanks to the opacity here, um, I, th I think the way, the way I see it, I don't have super technical information on that, but, but the way I see it, um, each new label that you are applying is going to be on top of the 
other materials, which means this one is on top of, of this one. Okay, so metal materials here is on top of this one. And thanks to the transparency, you can you can define transparency to this material, which is going to reveal by transparency the material that is beneath. So in that particular particular case, I just use uh, these texture files um, that I'm going to to show you. They are in Keyshot, in the Keyshot folder. So this is this this very file here that I created created in uh, in Photoshop. So this is a very very simple uh, texture file. And it's, it's it. You can hardly make do more simples. I, I created it quite interactively by going back and forth between Photoshop and ZBrush. And uh, I will just make a few adjustments, import it back into ZBrush to see how this would be laid out in, uh, in the 3D space. But um, it's, it's, it's quite easy to do, even though it, it takes like three clicks of a button to, to export it and import it back. It's, uh, it's in fact uh, an easy process. And uh, I, I created a black, and white a black and white version of this uh, same um, uh, texture. And this uh, black and white version is straight uh, applied to the opacity. And uh, with, where you have uh, black information is going to be transparent and where you have white information is going to be opaque, which is the opposite as uh, all uh, Photoshop is working. And um, my uh, base material, as you can see, if I can put it all in the same, uh, in the same window, the same screen, my base material here is uh, just a glass material. Very simple because even though right now it doesn't really look like a piece of fabric, uh, I I knew that applied to this kind of geometry, which really, really looks like um, uh, a piece of fabric, uh, plus the the post-processing that I, that I would apply later on on the file, uh, I knew it, it would really help to make it look like a, a transparent piece of satin fabric. This is what I wanted to have, a transparent piece of satin fabric. So satin means quite a, a, quite a strong reflectivity, but uh, with transparency. If I go back to my, to my main file, and you see that now it, it doesn't look too much too much like a glass, but uh, but a bit a bit uh, more like a, a piece of fabric. And here it 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 is still very CG. It doesn't look too much like fabric. So the, the post processing really really help, I think, to uh, to make it look more like fabric. Uh, the other tough part of uh, of material I had is the toga material. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, okay, no, I I, I did. Uh, it's, it's not the correct material for first. Uh, so let me maybe check the the correct one, uh, which is in here. Fabric toga, fabric toga, white materials. So let me apply that to the correct piece of geometry. Fabric materials here. I'm going to take that one and apply it here. Sometimes you have to. Okay, maybe it's going to crash. I feel it's going to crash. Thank you, Keyshot. Okay, let me pause for a sec. And um, when you when you start to work uh, with a uh, heavy uh, 3D, because in, in that case I I'm not too concerned about uh, efficiency. 
So my scene is, is pretty heavy. It's around, I think, 50 million polygons uh, in, a, in, a, in key shots. So being as in whatever software you use when, when you start to have very heavy scenes like that, uh, software are going to crash. So you have to be prepared to, to crash and uh, save often and uh, have a lot of disk space so you can save a lot of different versions, even though by the end you are going to, to delete of all those uh, useless uh, different versions, but just um, in, the, in, the process of, in the process of working on those images, having a lot of, uh, of different versions is, is very important. And uh, if I'm just uh, view, view, view. Heads up display, as you can see, it's uh, 38 million polygons. No, it's it's way more. So it's it's very easy. So it has to crash at some point. So let's try again to sign the correct material here. Tutorial O2. Okay, it's going to crash again. So I think I know why it crashes. And uh, when I was working on these materials, uh, I just noticed that the transparency for some reason uh, wasn't working in, conjunct in a conjunction with the uh, labels uh, on top of uh, something else that uh, a transparent materials, I mean uh, for her body. So the next materials below is a transparent materials, translucent, I should say. And uh, I think you, 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 you'll have to forget about this material. We, we are just going to go, um, just have a look, general look. It's not that important, in fact, because I could achieve this transparent look. Oh, great. Didn't crash. Not yet. But it's going very heavy on my computer right now. Not on the memory, but on the processor. So I'm not sure yet it's not going to crash. So what I'm going to do is to maybe lower the, the rendering uh, performance, just so we can have a rough idea at the moment. OK. So here's a, the pretty much the, the material that I use as a pass to have a to have the first render. And uh, thanks to compositing, it's possible to to mix different paths and to obtain uh, uh, the exact material that you desire. So I try in that stage not to be too much obsessed by the the material quality inside Keyshot. Uh, all what I want is just just to have a basic render where I have roughly the correct materials because it really helped me to have an idea of all of how all those materials are working together. And uh, later on, thanks to those different paths that I shown you before, I'm going to show them again. They are here in um, tutorial package, files, images. And thanks to to the gigantic power of key shots and and uh, and it, it's it's really it's so efficient and so fast. Uh, you can render whatever global path you want later on. You know, a global a global uh, diffuse uh, reflection pass, a more tightened reflection pass. Okay, Fresnel pass. Uh, an overall. Where it is? Where is it? An overall diffuse pass, and uh, thanks thanks to the the, the the possibility combined in Photoshop and with those raw render as a base, you can pretty much recreate whatever um, whatever material you want. But where this base uh, render comes in very handy is that it gives you quite of a nice reference because. Keyshot is designed to be 
to be uh, very accurate. So you are pretty sure that the way all those materials are working together give you something that is very close to what you will have in uh, in the real world. And uh, thanks to that, it's very easy to come with your own materials later on in Photoshop by combining different um, different renders with different fusion mode, painting by hand, and. Uh, uh, it's, it's the same thing that starting with a, a correct uh, plate in um, in matte painting and in photo bashing. Once you have a, a correct plate, uh, every other photo or every other piece of painting that you are going to put on top of it is going to be integrated in a context. And it's it's way for me it's 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 much easier to to start off with a correct uh, a correct base render. Then what I did once I had this render, and maybe I, I should just show you something important in a key shot, is to work in a 2.2 Ghana. If you want to have realistic materials, uh, you have to go for the 2.2 Ghana, unless you want to composite your materials later on in a software like Fusion, uh, which uh, is integrated in a, in a linear workflow which is called the linear workflow. Uh, but uh, for me, as my texture was, were edited in a 2.2 gamma, straight out of Photoshop, um, and I, I wanted to edit back these uh, this, uh, files in, in Photoshop, it, it was making more sense to work in a 2.2 gamma instead of trying to tweak my lights, my lights forever to have some, some things that look realistic. Because when you work in a 0.1 gamma, you see, Everything is uh, completely different in terms of, of uh, rendering. And now I, I, I have to go back into my uh, environment, try to, tick, to tweak the contrast of the environment, the brightness, try to tweak um, my, uh, my main light source. And by the end, it doesn't look uh, realistic at all. So this is my, my piece of advice. Go for straight from the beginning for 2.2 gamma. From here, what I did is just to select the whole, uh, the all the brush um, hierarchy. So I, I'm sure I'm not selecting my lights and uh, just apply whatever material I want. No, mate, sorry. So I usually use this, this mate material. And uh, from there, matte gray, I can do my, my, my mate uh, render path and uh, go for, for example, for a metal material, which is here. Um, if you want to have something very contrasty, you can just assign a black, but you won't have reflection in a flat areas. So I usually do a 50% a gray. And uh, now I can render if I want a diffuse reflection material so that I'm going to use later on. I can go for the velvet material here, just tweak the shear and sheen. Play with the backscatter, edginess, roughness if you want, and create your final pass, which really helped uh, in some cases to, to, uh, to separate uh, different uh, shapes from one another, especially if you want uh, a refle some, some reflective uh, pass. Uh, friend, this friendly pass is, is really useful. So these are pretty much the only pass that I really need. Mm, the, other, the other run that I do is, is with a material already set up, which is the tune outline black. So with the tune outline black, I can very quickly make an edge pass, which will allow me later on to, to uh, have a selection of all the, the edges and uh, just interact with those edges. 
So I usually push the contours and the quality also to four. And you have to be careful with, with this material, especially if you have um, contour width in pixel. Because if you have this contour width set in pixel, you have to, to remember that this is going to be 8 pixels, and 8 pixels on an 8K render or 6K render or 2K render uh, don't give the same. So you can't really count on what you see at screen here to, to tweak your materials. And with the, with the experience, I know that if I'm going to render this at 4 or 6K, I, I have to put uh, just uh, 8 as a contour width. You know? So you just have to, to try for yourself to find the the right, uh, the correct uh, settings. And here you can, uh, I generally go for very, very wide uh, control angle. So I'm sure I'm only selecting the, the, the very edges because I, I don't want, I, I don't want to impact all of the edges of my, of my uh, image because it will simply blur the image. This is not what I want. I want to keep uh, some sharp details, but just be able to to interact with my main edges. So very uh, useful path to have this edge path, which is here pretty much with the same settings. Um, the other path I'm, I'm doing is uh, going to show you that it's a really cool new feature of a uh, of Keyshot 6, it is this new ambient occlusion materials. So you just have to go for a flat material, as seen any color you want, it doesn't matter. You go into texture, and here into texture, you are going to choose the occlusion. And here it is, your ambient occlusion is here. You can just tweak the the different settings if you want to customize it. But uh, believe me, I never, I never experienced a, a software that is able to, that can render an ambient occlusion pass this fast. This is just crazy. You know, it, it shot render an ambient occlusion pass at the same speed that a diffuse pass. Uh, and this is a really, really, really cool. Uh, what other pass did I do? I think this is all. This is pretty much all I did. Uh, you can, if you if you have uh, some low res models, or if you want to to have a, a, a low resolution um, wireframe render, uh, what what we, what you can do is just to go into ZBrush, just uh, low res uh, every um, every sub tools. Send, send it back to, to Keyshot and then using this um, cool material which is in miscellaneous, I think, which is uh, this wireframe material. You can assign that any anyone, any anyone you want and just uh, tweak it for your, for your need. No? And um, here, it's very high res everywhere, but uh, the only place where I really wanted to, to have um, a reference was on the ground. And uh, as you see, I've cheated a lot because uh, I didn't respect uh, completely the, the, uh, the, uh, true, uh, the true perspective. Here we can see, in fact, the perspective is a bit... Uh, on the sides, it's not it's not parallel, but I really I really wanted to have uh, this uh, very very straight, very kind of wind point perspective where everything is is every horizontal line is perfectly horizontal. So I think this is pretty much it for the. Key shot, um, key shot overview. It's it's really not a non-technical overview. Uh, once again, it's it's really to show you my process and why and how I I, I did things and uh, how, how I 
each of the steps I take really helped me to solve uh, specific problems. So see you in the next chapters where we are going to have a look at, uh, at the various other tools that I used.